Um, so my mantra is better than zero, which I know sounds like kind of an odd mantra, but as a speech pathologist working with one of my students, um, he used to say it when we would be doing some of our activities and I just loved the positive attitude. So if he'd roll a dice and it would be a one, he would say, oh, well, better than zero. And I just thought that it was such a great way of looking at the silver lining of things. And so as my daughter started to grow, um, if they were disappointed by something or, you know, if we were trying to make the best out of something, then we'd always say, oh, better than zero. Um, and so we think that that saying just kind of encourages us to look at the bright side of things. Maybe it's not making the goal that you wanted, but if it's better than zero, then you did something and that's worth something. Um, so we just kind of like to look at the positive uh, side of things. And we think that that mantra is something that helps us to do that. I love that. Now, what are, what are the, some of the things that you love about being a mom? Oh my gosh, so many things. I am a mom to two girls and I think that it's just so much fun to teach them to be independent and to, um, you know, be themselves and to encourage all of their interests and to be a part of that, I think is just such an amazing thing and to, to be, you know, a part of their life and shaping their lives and shaping their personalities. Uh, we have so much fun together. Um, I, I just like to support them in all of their interests and they're so young. And so they're so varied. Um, and I think it's great to see as their personalities and their character develop um, and see their successes and celebrate with them. Um, it's very rewarding, hard, but rewarding. What are some of the things you like to do together? Well, um, both of my girls actually really like to cook and bake, which we really enjoy trying different recipes that we find online or in cookbooks or on Pinterest. Um, so recently we've been doing a lot of different um, copycat crumble recipes and kind of going through and trying and rating them. You know, do we think this one's better than the last one? Um, so we really like desserts and my oldest is 10 and she's even started to make some occasional easy side dishes to bring to potlucks or even a dinner now and then um, for us. So cooking is a big thing. We also like to read together a lot. So we're just starting to go through um, now that they're both, we can find some books that they're both kind of interested in because we do have a five-year age gap. I have a five-year-old and a 10-year-old. And um, so some of the American Girl books are really fun for us to read. So right now we're going through Felicity. Um, and then my oldest has started reading some Harry Potter books, but I think we're going to start from number one with my youngest entering into kindergarten. So we're going to start with Harry Potter one, um, and just like reading the borrowers and, um, the boxcar children and things like that. So reading's a big one in sports. Um, they're starting to get interested in swimming. Um, so it's fun to see them do that in Girl Scouts too. Um, my youngest is so excited to get into Girl Scouts and my oldest has been a part of Girl Scouts since she was in kindergarten and I was in Girl Scouts as a kid. Um, so those are some of the things that we like to do and just have fun and have movie nights and play outside and things like that. Oh, you're such a fun mom. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned in these 10 years? <laughs> Flexibility. Um, nothing is going to go the way that you plan. And so just being flexible and having realistic goals. Um, and I think not having expectations. I think there's a difference between having expectations and having hopes. So I really try to have just a hope for how things can go instead of an expectation, because you can be disappointed by having expectations. You know, I think this day is going to be perfect. I'm going to plan everything and I'm going to take my kids to the zoo but then maybe one of them is cranky and, you know, we don't get to see all the animals that we want. And that can be a big disappointment, but just like temp tempering those expectations and just having a hope of like, I just hope we have some memories. I hope we have some fun. Um, I think that there's a difference between that. So learning not to have expectations and having realistic goals and things like that, and just trying to be patient and taking deep breaths sometimes because it can be a lot. Um, 
those are some of the things that I've learned over the years. It's such great perspective. I haven't thought of it that way, but that's, that's very, that's a great. One of the things that I love about you is that you are empowering moms and you talk a lot about uh, helping them with confidence. So what are a few things that you would say to other moms to help them in their confidence and make them feel good about themselves? One of the things when I started um, blogging and getting on Instagram is this is just like a fun hobby for me. Um, And I started it when I became a mom because I didn't want to lose myself. Um, I think it's very easy to just become a mom and kind of lose that creative outlet and and lose um, your self-confidence and just put everything into your kids. And so part of what helps me and what I encourage other people to do is take some time for yourself every morning. And, you know, even if I only take five minutes to put my makeup on, but that helps me feel better. And so I think you need to pinpoint what helps you feel better. What helps you feel good about yourself when you present yourself to the world and others Um, and take some time for self-care. Something that's really important to me is getting some exercise in. That's a big stress reliever for me, and it helps me be a a good mom. Um, I think it's good to have breaks because then you come back and you feel good about yourself and, um, you know, you can be more confident. I think even getting dressed I like to try and get dressed, even if it's just like nice workout clothes every day, if they're matching, if they're clean, if they, they are cute, they don't have to be expensive. Um, that for me is, is helpful. I've tried to find ways of incorporating self-care and just little things that help me feel good about myself. Even if I'm like wearing eye patches, you know, when I'm driving my kids to school, at least I'm taking time for myself and no one's going to see me anyway, if I have sunglasses on, but like that helps me feel more confident because then, oh, look, the dark circles under my eyes. Cause I got to bed at midnight or gone. Um, <laughs> so it's all about finding what makes you feel good, whether it's clothing, whether it's makeup, whether it's working out, um, whether it's self-care and trying to fit it into your life. And, you know, doing that because it really doesn't have to take a lot of time and it really doesn't have to cost a lot of money either. 